Hey everybody, I'm Joe, and I've been working on a problem recently. Assume for the moment that you've never done anything with 3D printing. What is going to be the number one question that you ask? It is, yeah, obviously, what's the best 3D printer I can get? Now, when people ask this question, what they're oftentimes asking is, for a recommendation and people answer them in kind. They tell them what 3D printer they used like four or five years ago when they started in 3D printing. But there are new 3D printers coming out all the time and couldn't we assume that at least some of those 3D printers are going to be new and impressive and doing things that we had never seen before? Yeah! There are new and impressive 3D printers coming out, so that idea of what is the best is a moving target. And the suggestions of just a few years ago, well, they might not be the best still. Now, longtime viewers of my channel might remember that in the past couple of years, about March, I would have a series of reviews of 3D printers and call it March Mad Mess. It wasn't just reviewing new 3D printers, but re-reviewing old 3D printers. Because while a person on YouTube might say, hey, here's my first impression of this printer, we very rarely go back and say, here's the 3D printers that I'm still using, or here's a problem that I had with it that came up. And so I wanted to do that. Now, the first year I did March Mad Mess, I literally re-reviewed every 3D printer I had seen and I did that for a couple of years but this year well this year I wanted to do something a little bit differently and it's taken me some time to get everything together which is why this year's March Mad Mess is in August. I think 2020 showed us that March is a concept and time doesn't exist like we thought. Now some would say that it's not fair to grade 3D printers against each other because you can't compare one 3D printer to another. One might be good at one thing and one might be good at another, and that's true. But I'm a 3D printing professor, so of course I'm going to grade, and I know how to grade. And one thing that I know about grading is where you put your focus in the grades is where you're going to see improvement the most. So if you're focused on specific hardware like linear rails or smooth rods or smoothie drivers, you're going to see those pop up in 3D printers that are otherwise crap. That's why I don't grade on specific hardware, but instead grade on 3D printers effect on people, how easy they are to use, how much they cost and whether they can make good stuff. Now I'm gonna go into more detail in this in the next video, but suffice it to say that this method of looking at 3D printers has given me a very interesting way to grade them against each other. Because if you calculate a number for price and ease of use and capability of a 3D printer, you can plot that on a three axis graph and that three axis graph creates a triangle. And if you calculate the area of that triangle and then look at another 3D printer and calculate the area of that triangle, wouldn't a 3D printer that fills out that triangle more be better overall than another 3D printer that doesn't fill it out so well? There are, of course, some obvious flaws to this logic. For instance, uh, let's come up with a hypothetical situation. Let's say that there's a 3D printer that's got a really great price, but it's crap for capability, can't make anything, and it's ridiculously hard to use. We'll call this one the um, Easy 4D. And then we've got another one that has amazing capability, but its price is really not that great and it's also just as hard to use as the easy ford so it's almost the exact same triangle but tilted high capability hard to use not a good price well we'll, we'll call this one the um uh, jg faker fartist d and, and just to complete this, let's say we got another 3D printer that's ridiculously easy to use, but it has no more capability than the Easy Ford, 
And it's the same price somehow as the JG Faker Fartist. So its triangle is skewed in a different direction. I don't know. We'll call this one the Boy Box 3D printer. All three of these printers have an equal score as far as the area of their triangles are concerned, but I could not say that they were all equal. And so it's impossible with this scale to make an absolute comparison. However, in real life, it's very rarely so cut and dry between two 3D printers that are so high and low on the different scales. And so, generally speaking, this method of comparison does work, but just keep in mind, nothing's perfect. So, going forward in March Mad Mess 2021, in August, we're going to be taking a look at this chart, how the different 3D printers that I've ever seen in the past fall on this chart, and what that means for comparing 3D printers, and maybe be able to answer the question of what is the best 3D printer that you can buy in 2021. I hope that you'll subscribe and ring the bell, stick around so that you can see how this is all going to shake out. and. I hope that you're excited to see the results because I'm certainly excited to show them to you. Did you hear that? That was weird. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description, and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon, which you can check out here, and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you. And see you next time.